Hey guys, it's Spook again. I had a question that came up about uh, how to add text to uh, an image file. And I think that the best way to show you guys is just to do another training video. Um, the question was asked in a reply to one of my Faststone image viewer tutorial videos. And it was just a couple of lines of text. So I'm guessing at what the user is asking. But uh, I think what, what he wants to know is that if you have an image like like this image right here and you wanted to burn uh, text onto the image itself essentially just writing uh, text onto the image how you would do that um, the users got his image uh, in sequential order and uh, named that way and, and he just wants to know how to put those numbers on so Let's start with the very first step. These are photos that uh, I took with my wife when we went to Europe um, uh, this past summer. And they're just a bunch of uh, randomly named files uh, from the camera. So it's got the file name that the camera put on. So let's say that these are in the order that we would like and we want to rename them all um, so that they're in the sequence. So one of the first things that I would do is just uh, select everything and press F2 to do a batch rename and you can see here that I have a template already set up uh, it's got date time and then these uh, number signs but let's say we just want to do straight numbers right I can go ahead and just issue uh, if we want to do two digits or, or three digits I would put in the appropriate pound sign so let's assume that we want to do a four digit number okay so then I would put in four pound signs begin with the number one and do auto rename it's gonna ask me if I want to do that I say sure let it do its thing and when it's done get back out so what you see here is that from those 26 images uh, it renamed them all starting with uh, 0001 all the way up to 0026 so now let's say we want to take that file name and we want to burn it into the image itself how do we do that so there's a function within faststone and what you do is you select all of your images you can right click on them go to tools and you can go to batch convert which is the f3 okay. uh, i'm going to just uh, select all and press f3 rather than going through the context menu we come to the same dialog box as we did before for the renaming and the difference this time is that I'm going to make sure that I check this box right here use advanced option resize etc okay. and then I click on the button that says advanced options and within this you're going to see a bunch of stuff okay one of the first tabs that you'll see is resize and this was covered in another tutorial that I had which basically allows you to resize the image to whatever size you want. Usually these are high megapixels coming out of your digital camera. You may want to resize them a bit smaller for the web. And if you wanted to do that, that's how you, how you would do it. Just check it, pick a size. Either a standard size or a custom size. And you can play with this option. That's not the purpose of this tutorial, so I am going to uncheck that box. Okay. You'll notice that on the tabs here, anything that is used will have this little green dot next to it. So one of the cool things that you can do um, with Faststone Image Viewer is to burn text onto your image. And you do that within these advanced options. Okay, so this, this option right here on the text tab. So if I check that or click on that, you'll see that my add text uh, option is checked. By default, it's not, and that green green dot would go away. So make sure that's checked. And what you'll have here is that you'll have a bunch of variables that you can insert and burn into your picture. So for example, if you click on this button here, it gives you this drop down where you have a bunch of different options. So you can burn the image width onto the um, file, height, file name, date time, exif data, all of that. And you can see that after each one, you have this variable, dollar sign $s for the metering mode, uh, dollar sign uh, $p for flash information, um, date time, and it gives you little templates here. And if you go to uh, that option, you can see what the templates mean. So dollar sign $d1 is date and time. 
dollar sign D2 is just the year. Okay? I think what the user is asking for is uh, based off of the file name. So we can just click on uh, file name and we can say let's do it without the extension. So let's say you just want the number, you don't want the JPEG. Okay, so we would say without extension, that's dollar sign C2. Okay. And you can see that it's adding uh, text to the image as a variable. So this dollar sign H1 was previously in there. We can check out and see what that is. H is uh, date time from exit data, and H1 itself is date and time. So we don't want that, we just want the file name which gives us the number, so I'm just going to go and delete that. And you can see down here that it's uh, uh, taken out that dollar sign H1. Okay. You can add static text to this too. So let's say you can say image number. Okay. So what that does is it always will burn the text image number onto every image, but then that dollar sign C2 is going to vary depending on the file name. So you'll have image number colon uh, 001, 0002, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, this is not going to be how it appears on the image. This is quite large so you can actually read it. But if you want, you can click on this font button, pick any available system font that you have, change the size, uh, you want to make it bold, italics, whatever. Okay. I'm going to just pick, uh, let's say, Arial, and we can just do bold, and pick a decent size. I want you to really see it. So let's say 48 points. You can pick a color. Okay. White's fine. The other thing that you may want to do is to uh, figure out which position you want to put it in, and this is uh, where you would do it. So you have some default top left, top center. Uh, top right, center, which is center of the image, bottom left, bottom right, whatever. Okay. So right now it's set to uh, bottom right, uh, but based on how my video is being cropped as I record this on my Microsoft Surface Pro, uh, I think I'm just going to change it for uh, training purposes to top left. It will make it easier to see. Okay. You can see it jumping from this position up to this one. It may be easier if I take this out. See how that jumps to the top left? Okay, but I'll put that back in, just so we can read it. If it's getting too close to the edge of the picture, either the top or, or the left side, you can further adjust it with this uh, offset, this XY offset. So I can increase, see what's going on there? I can increase the X offset, and let's say 50. And I can do the same with the Y offset, and you can just type it in too, obviously. Okay. And you can see how it adds a little bit of padding to the top and to the left. So you really can play around with this. If you want to have a little shadow under your uh, text, you can. That's that box. Do that, you can see it happening as I uncheck and check that. You can have a background color if you like. See that? Why don't we leave it so we can see it easier on the image, but feel free to play around. And then the last option is the opacity. You can make it semi-transparent, 38%, um, or 100, not transparent at all. Once you've set this up the way you like to do it, click OK. And then the last thing that I will uh, suggest to you is to rename. Check the box that says rename. And the reason is that if you don't, you're going to modify your original images if you're working off original images. If you copied it to a different folder and you're working off that, then the rename doesn't really matter. But I always uh, do the rename because maybe after you do it once, you don't like the result and you want to redo it. So uh, I basically just uh, give it a pattern like S underscore. Um, I did this when I resized my images to a smaller file. So S just stood for smaller. You can use whatever. Okay. I'm just going to leave it um, and then click convert. Um, last thing is that just make sure your output folder is the same folder as your or main images. It could be different if, if that's how you want to work, but uh, uh, if you're doing this really quick to, and changing the look and stuff, it's easier to put in the same folder so you can see the results right away. Okay. So once all that's done, click on convert. Let the program do its thing. It's going to go 
pretty quickly. And if you have compression set up uh, on your settings for saving JPEG files, which uh, is right here, and you can't click on it with this dialog in the front, but you can see that the uh, file format that's being saved is uh, JPEG. Um, so in the output format, you can also specify a compression setting. Uh, and obviously, the compression setting is set to something uh, uh, much more aggressive, well, not much more, but more aggressive than uh, what my camera was outputting. And the reason I know that is that I can see that it's uh, saving some space in the new file. So basically, this is saying that my new file size is 75% of my old file size. And my old file size was just straight out of the camera. Um, so, you know, it doesn't compress it by a whole lot. I think I might have used a 75% compression or something like that, or 80 uh, by default, which gives pretty good results. But, but that's why you see that. Otherwise, you just let it run. And it depends on how fast your processor is. Uh, Surface has got a pretty decent processor, so it goes pretty quickly. These are large image files. Um, if you have a, a desktop with an i7 or whatever, it's going to fly. So when you're done, click the Done button. Everything disappears. And you can see that all of my originals are selected at the top here. But then I got these new ones down here that's got that S underscore at the beginning. So if I click one of these and open it up, you can see that there's my, there's my uh, text. Okay. There's my text. So what you can see from here is that it's actually taking the file name after it's renamed. So this may not be what you want to do. And if that's the case, then what you'll have to do is that make sure you select your originals, specify a different output folder so you don't overwrite uh, your original, and then don't rename it. And that way it will retain uh, this original file name. So let me just do that really quick. Um, so you can see what I'm talking about. So let's take this image one here. Okay, do the same thing F3. I leave my advanced option the same. The only difference here is that I'm going to uncheck rename, and I'm going to specify a different output folder. So one above this, and do my convert. It'll go through the same process. Click done. So now when I go to the top level, here's my new image and it's doing what we want. It's, it's giving me just the original number. Okay, and obviously this part of the text, the image number, I can uh, put whatever I want. I can do it blank too. So if I was going to do it blank, let's go back in here, F3 again. Oh, sorry. F3, advanced options, text. I just take out that, that static text image number, delete that completely. Click OK. Everything else is the same output folder. I make it, do you want to overwrite warning here? And sure. Okay. I'll, let it, I'll, I'll let it overwrite the old one. Done. Go back one level. And voila. So you can see on this one, it's got just the number. Anyways, I hope this helps. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, feel free to ask me any questions uh, uh, via the comments, and I will get back to you. Thanks, guys.